purpose of this lab is to determine the percent of copper in a post-1982 penny. So you will see here that I have a penny that is from 2018 and I have a penny that is from 1972. I have a balance, I have six molar HCO, a watch glass, metal file, and a 100 milliliter beaker. So the first step of the procedure is to find the mass of the pre-1982 penny. And so this pre-1982 penny that we have is from 1972. So what we want to do is these electronic balances that we have in our classroom have a plastic cover. So you want to make sure to lift the cover and you always want to use some sort of weigh boat on the scale. You don't want to put anything directly on to the, the metal pan. If it's not zeroed, you want to make sure to hit zero. And then you'll go ahead and put the penny into the weigh boat. And so the mass of this pre-1982 penny has a mass of 3.08 grams. So make sure that you record 3.08 grams into your lab notebook. We will get a post-1982 penny. So our post-1982 penny has a date of 2018. And so you wanna make sure to record that date. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a metal file and we're gonna scratch four deep cuts into the edge of the penny. And so I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna do one at 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock and nine o'clock. Okay, so I did a few more than four, um, but you will see that I have these grooves that I have cut into the edge of the penny. And so you notice that there is a silver color exposed. Make sure you are recording observations as you are watching this. And so we have a little bit of this silver color exposed. And so the next thing that we're going to do is we would need to clean this penny uh, with steel wool, but it's already shiny, so we don't need to worry about um, cleaning it. But now we're going to take the mass. So notice that it's already at zero. So I'll put the penny into the weigh boat and I'll wait for it to steady. So the mass of this post 1982 penny, this 2018 penny is 2.50 grams. So make sure that you are recording 2.50 grams in your lab notebook. And so now what it says to do is to place the penny into this beaker. So I have the penny in this 100 milliliter beaker, and then we are adding about 20 milliliters of HCl. So because it says about 20 milliliters, we can actually just use the beaker as a way to measure volume. Because it doesn't want a precise volume, we don't need to worry about using a graduated cylinder. You definitely could, but we don't have to. So I'm gonna take this six molar HCl. I'm gonna add about 20. If it goes a little over, that's okay. We wanna make sure that the HCl is the excess reactant. And so now I want you to make some observations of what you see happening in the beaker. So you notice the penny. So make any observations that you have. I'll bring this close. So look at the grooves. Notice how the grooves are no longer that bright silver color. So write down what you notice happening. And now what we're going to do is we are simply going to cover this with a watch glass and we're going to let it sit and just let the reaction proceed. And so whenever you set something out for an extended period of time, you wanna make sure it's on a paper towel. You can put your initials on it just to make sure that you know which one is yours. And so we're gonna let this sit and we're going to be able to make observations of this penny in this HCL. So I just wanna do a quick check-in of our penny in the hydrochloric acid. So I have the watch glass on top. You're gonna to actually notice there's some, what looks like condensation on the top. And if I hold this close, you can actually see that the bubbles are coming out of those markings that I made with the metal file. So this is gonna be another opportunity for you to take some observations between the penny 
and the HCl. What we're going to do now is we are going to work through the second part of the percent composition of a penny. And so what I want you to do is make some final observations about what you see with the penny in the six molar hydrochloric acid solution. So if you notice, uh, you have some little brown specks at the bottom. Notice you do still have some bubbles forming. And so that's gonna be important for us as well. So notice you do still have some bubbles coming off of the penny. So what we're going to do is we are going to remove the penny with these forceps. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually remove the penny. Now I want you to take a look at that penny, right? That's actually just kind of a shell. Notice it's even bent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it on a watch glass. And I'm going to start by just rinsing it with some distilled water. Okay, so I'm going to just rinse it with some distilled water. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this beaker that had the HCl in it as my waste beaker. And so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put this in the distilled water. I'm going to dump the distilled water out. I'm going to rinse it one more time just to make sure I rinse out anything that might be left in this shell. And then what it says to do in the procedure is that it says to now rinse the penny with ethanol. So what I have is I have a small amount of ethanol or ethyl alcohol, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rinse the penny with some ethanol. So I'm just gonna kind of rub it around in the ethanol Ethanol evaporates very easily, and so if we actually were to leave this ethanol out on the counter overnight, it would actually probably be evaporated by the next morning. So if you notice, as I'm rinsing it, I'm pressing down, and there are some bubbles coming out. So I'm just going to make sure to rinse it in the ethanol, pour the ethanol back in, and let's see, with just a little bit more ethanol, right on top of that penny. We just wanna make sure it's rinsed really well. Any remnants of the HCL is out of the penny. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this penny onto paper towel and I'm gonna just let it dry for a couple minutes because when I take the mass of this shell of the penny, I wanna make sure that it's completely dry. So I'm gonna allow this to dry on the paper towel and then in a few minutes, I'll go ahead and I will find the mass and then we will be finished with this lab. We have let our copper shell dry. So what we're going to do is we are going to take the final mass of this copper shell and then we will be ready to do the calculations. So I'm going to start by putting the weigh boat onto the scale and then I'll zero. What I'll do is I will add the copper shell. And after the reading stabilizes, it is 0.29 grams. So the very last observation that we will record is that the mass of the copper shell, it's now decreased a little bit, the mass of the copper shell is 0.28 grams.